my name's Ado, call sign EI9HAB, and I think it's safe enough to take this off. I'm in my house. Um, so what this video is about is um, I have this cheap uh, amplified loop antenna, um, one of these MLA30s, got about a year ago. Um, I tried it inside the attic here, um, but the issue is it just amplifies all the noise around it here in the, in the house. So I need to get it outside to try it a little bit better. Um, but I also need a remote rotation system, you know, a remote, remote rotator for, for the antenna, because obviously with a loop you want to use the nulls to um, null out strong adjacent signals or whatever. Rotators are not cheap, you know, they're 100, 200 euro, um, and um, I'm not prepared to spend that for a cheap loop. Um, amplifier. I just want to see if I can get something that will work. So what I found was this. The cheapest chips TV antenna that has a rotator on it um, and it's remote controlled or it has a little control box. Um, now the thing is I'll be able to see the loop out my attic window here so I can actually look at it if it turns. The thing about this TV antenna is, is that it's, it was 30 euro as well, you know, which is much cheaper than um, an amateur radio rotator for antennas. And this is the rotator here. Um, and <coughs> this is the antenna, the TV antenna that comes with it. Um, but unfortunately, the um, rotator is, uh, must be attached to this for it to work properly. This completes the circuit, basically these two pins, um, because it's the motor is driven through the coax um, uh, from the uh, box um, that it comes with. So, as you can see, this thing, it's pretty plasticky, but there's a decent boom on this, um, and I think all these little parts will just unscrew easily enough. And then what I'll do is I'll just find some way of mounting the loop antenna onto it just to keep it centered over the rotator for the loop. Um, and I'll just strip away all these other excess pieces. Now, just as I'm t speaking now, um, if this doesn't work out, this little boom actually here, if I can strip all this off, this would that'd be handy for um, a small Yagi, like a two meter uh, one, or um, maybe it will carry the weight for, um, a mox on for six or something I don't know and um, but anyway there's a few things I'll use this I'll try and use this for if the loop doesn't work out and um, so let's see how it goes So we'll snip these off. We don't need this boom part for now, so. So this is it. This is everything stripped off. Um, there's a few holes where I've taken things out, so they'll have to be covered. I uh, just have any water getting into the control board. You can control it manually with this button. And the turn rate's pretty slow, so that's okay. It seems to get confused as to what's left and what's right but I don't think it makes that much difference because with a loop antenna it would be a quarter turn anyway that's all you'd really need so next bit is to get the loop onto it so I did a bit of tinkering around this is the top um, of the the box the rotator box um, which is a hard plastic so this is the one meter um, hole that will support the loop um, antenna and um, the amplifier. So what I did was I drilled a hole um, uh, in it centered over the rotator so it will um, rotate on the axis of the rotor um, and these are um, mounts for curtain poles. So there's one here and I hope forget there's one on the back so that's gives so basically just join those two up to give the pole stability going through the hole in the in the casing here. And I use some sealant, some what's called Tech 7 here, 
um, to waterproof the um, the holes that were made for the bolts and the main hole for the pole. So here it is on a small tripod in action. So you can see it rotating there. The action isn't the smoothest, but it definitely rotates. So yeah, it could be used as a little um, portable, rotatable loop as it is, but the plan is to put it up high permanently as a receiving antenna. So there you go.